Welcome back. In the last session, we looked at what exactly an app is and all the underlying stuff that Bubble handles for you, making it more than just no code, more than absence of code. We looked at how Bubble gives you an out-of-the-box database, a visual editor for setting up workflows to make your app do things, and of course, the drag-and-drop design editor. In this video, we're going to start looking into design, but before we jump into the editor, we're going to cover some theory, and here's why. I want to make sure that we're speaking the same language. When I talk about things like UI, UX, and responsive design, I want you to know exactly what I mean. So we're going to cover a few general terms used in app design. And secondly, Bubble's design editor is purely visual. You drag and drop elements on the page and style them as you please. There's no CSS, no HTML, and no JavaScript needed. But you're going to find that it's not just about dropping things where they look good. Even though it's not written out in code, the way Bubble's design engine works is still based on those same principles. And when you start designing, it helps to know those principles, or you're going to find yourself wrestling with layouts that don't behave the way you expect. So we're also going to cover some theory on how Bubble's design engine works. If that sounds good, let's go! UI, or user interface, is all about how your app looks and how users interact with it. It includes colors, typography, buttons, icons, layouts, and interactive elements like maps and animations. Think about it. Your app is essentially a machine working behind the stage to solve specific problems. And this machine can have a lot of complicated moving parts like complex workflows, authentication, API connections. And the UI is how your users interact and communicate with this machine. It's not just about making things pretty. It's about making sure that everything is clear, consistent, and intuitive. So the UI is your attempt to hide the complexity and make everything seem easy. If users were exposed to this complexity, they wouldn't like it. So hiding it is a feature and not a bug. So while you may be proud of all the complex backend workflows you created, your users really don't care. They just want an app that's easy to use and solves the problem, whether it's transportation, project management, or boredom. A good UI guides your users through the jungle of processes happening backstage, presenting only what they need to see when they need it. Think about when you order an Uber, say. The app is doing a ton of things in the background. GPS tracking, payment processing, driver matching. But the UI simplifies all of that into just a few taps. All the users see is a clean interface guiding them through the process. The UX is often mixed up with the UI. They kind of sound the same, and on the surface they may seem to mean the same, but they're not exactly the same. UX, or user experience, is all about how someone feels when they use your app. It's less about what the app looks like and more about how easy and enjoyable it is to navigate. Are the menus intuitive? Is it easy to complete tasks? Is the performance smooth or choppy? UX design is all about removing frustration and friction. Keep your app running smooth, easy to use, and bug-free. For example, if the Uber app made you fill out a long form before booking a ride, that would be pretty bad UX, even if the UI looked amazing. A wireframe is like your app's blueprint. It's a rough outline that shows where key elements like buttons, menus, and sections will go. You can sketch it out on paper, sticky notes, or in a tool like Figma. Whatever helps you visualize the layout before you start building. And it might seem unnecessary to design your app twice, but skipping this step can make it harder to see the bigger picture. When you dive straight into final design decisions, it's easy to box yourself into a layout that doesn't really work, and making big changes later on can be frustrating and time-consuming. So a wireframe helps you refine how your users flow through your app's features before you start styling and fine-tuning the details. This way you can map out and get a feeling of the UX before you start setting up the UI. Responsive design is all about making sure that your app looks great and works well on all devices. It's not building one version for desktop and one for mobile, although you can do that too, but responsive design is about your app dynamically fitting to all screen sizes. That means you can resize things, you can change font sizes, hide elements, or even entire sections. A left-hand navigation bar on desktop might collapse into a hamburger menu on mobile. It's worth keeping in mind that it's not just about how it looks, but also about the user experience on different devices. For example, a hover effect that works on desktop, where users reveal details by hovering over an element, won't work on mobile since there's no cursor. Similarly, buttons or links that are easy to click with a mouse might be too small or too close together for a user tapping their thumb on a phone screen. So responsive design is not only about making things smaller or bigger, but it's to make sure that your app is as easy to use on mobile as it is on desktop. Bubble's design engine is proprietary, meaning it replaces HTML, CSS, and JavaScript with a visual interface. Instead of writing code, you use drag-and-drop tools to position and style elements. 
But still, the output when you run the app is, well, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So what this means is that the editing experience is based on drag and drop, but Bubble turns that into code for you. And this is why your app works and looks the same in all browsers. The reason this is important is that even if Bubble spent a ton of resources building their design tools to be accessible to anyone, it's still based on the same principles that run websites and apps made on other platforms. Think about it. When you're looking at a page in a web browser, that browser has rendered the page for you. Every button, image, and line of text is placed on a specific part of the screen, just like you designed. How does the browser know what goes where? The answer is that the design of a web page is divided into two layers. First, you have the structure layer. This layer determines what elements are on the page in the first place. Buttons, images, text, never mind what they look like, all need to be placed on the page for the browser to know that they belong there. If we only had the structure layer, all elements would simply be stacked on top of each other without any kind of design. So this makes up the structure of your page. Then you have the layout layer. This layer controls how those elements look and behave. For example, when you fill out a form, that form may be centered on the screen, the elements may be stacked in a column with some distance between them, and they all have a certain height and width. So the layout layer takes the raw elements from the structure layer and tells the browser where to place them, what they look like, how big they should be, how far away they are from each other, and how they should respond to user actions like hovering. Before we start talking about these layers more in depth, it's worth noting that Bubble doesn't explicitly mention these layers anywhere. There's no need to look for them in the editor. So this is web design theory, and you don't need to know these things to use Bubble. But the knowledge will help you understand how exactly Bubble's design engine works, so I promise it's worth the effort. So now let's look at each of the layers in depth. Any page in Bubble is a hierarchy, and this hierarchy is part of the document object model, or DOM, and makes up the structure on the page. The DOM is a structured list of all the elements and is made up of three parts. You have the page, which is the topmost layer. You have containers, which in Bubble consists of different types of groups. And finally, we have elements that can be placed directly on the page or within a container. As you can see, every container and element inside the page is placed in a tree-like structure where elements are in a parent-child relationship. Containers are children of the page and the elements inside them, including other containers, are children of those containers. This hierarchy can go as deep as you need, meaning a container can be both a parent, which means it's holding other elements, and a child, meaning it's inside another container at the same time. Non-container elements like text, images, and buttons are always children, as they can't contain other elements. Every element that you place on the page is part of this hierarchy, which in itself doesn't look like much more than a bunch of elements stacked on top of each other. So all we're telling the browser right now is what elements are there and where in the hierarchy they belong. So to control how these elements look and behave on different screens, we need the next layer, the layout layer. The layout layer is inspired by the CSS module called Flexbox. So if you have a background working with CSS, Bubble's design engine will feel very familiar. Now think about it. We have a list of elements organized into a hierarchy, but how do we want those elements to look and behave on the screen? The first thing we need to discuss is what exactly layout means from a technical and design perspective. And it boils down to this. Layouts are based on rules. For example, if I tell the browser that I want an element to be placed exactly in the center of the page, that's a rule. It will always be in the center, regardless of screen size or resolution. Similarly, if I want there to be a 25 pixel distance between two elements like these two buttons, that's another rule. They will always be 25 pixels apart. Secondly, these rules need to be relative to something. For example, when I center an element like we just did, it needs to be in the center of something, right? And here we can start to see how the two layers are working together. We're setting up rules to determine how elements behave relative to their place in the hierarchy. I'm not telling the browser that this element should be in the center of the screen. I'm telling it that it should be in the center of its parent, which in this case is the page itself. For this second button, it doesn't make much sense to say that it's 25 pixels away from nothing. We're saying that it's 25 pixels away from its sibling, the other button. So the rules we create that makes up the layout layer depends on the hierarchy we set up in the structure layer. Let's look at another example, and don't worry if this is moving too fast. We're gonna look more in depth at responsive design later. But in this example, we have a group or container, and inside of that group, we have three input fields. So we have a parent and three children. Using just the structure layer, they're all crammed into a row starting in the top left corner, which doesn't make for a very pleasing design. So let's apply some rules. The first rule is that we tell this container that all of the elements within should be stacked on top of each other, like a column. The second rule is that we tell the container that there should be a gap between all elements, and that gap should be 25 pixels. 
The third rule is that we tell all the elements within the container that they should be centered. We do this by selecting them and setting their horizontal alignment to centered. Okay, so now we can see how the layers and rules work. Without the hierarchy, we wouldn't be able to set any rules. We need the container to instruct the browser what the elements should be centered relative to. And the input fields rely on each other to determine what they should be 25 pixels away from. Containers are needed whenever you need to change the rules for a group of elements. In this example, I've added two buttons at the bottom of the page. They're following the rules we set earlier. They're stacked in a column with 25 pixels apart. But in this case, I want those buttons to be placed next to each other, not on top of each other. To do that, I place them inside a second container. This group becomes a child of the first container and the parent of the buttons within. By changing the layout from column to row, we've set up a new rule. Every element inside of this container should be next to each other in a row. So setting up a UI is all about using the hierarchy and different layout rules together to make individual elements behave in a specific way relative to other elements. Okay, so let's sum that up. We have a hierarchy consisting of the page and usually one or more containers. The page is the parent of those containers and they are the parent of the elements within. The structure layer tells Bubble which elements are on the page and where in the hierarchy they belong. We then use that hierarchy to set up rules that govern how elements are positioned and sized relative to their parent and siblings. So these input fields need their parent to know what they're centered relative to. And we needed a second container to instruct the browser that these buttons should be next to each other rather than on top of each other. It's as simple and as complicated as that. We're not simply placing things on the page and expect them to stay exactly where we put them. Instead, we're systematically building a hierarchy and assigning behavior rules that make elements behave in a way that we can predict. Responsive design requires some planning and some trying and failing for sure, but you'll find that this combination of structure and layout is incredibly flexible. And while Bubble is powered by a proprietary engine, this is essentially how all modern websites and apps work. And that's it for this video. We're starting to see how Bubble's design system works, and in the next lesson, we'll look deeper into the structure layer and how you build your hierarchy. I'll see you there.